y'all, it's the Muscle Magpie here, and I wanted to talk to you guys about how to start keto. First of all, sorry for the long uh, <clears throat> inactivity on YouTube. I was busy cleaning my house and spring cleaning and getting myself ready to enter a new era of life, and I didn't have time. <laughs> so here we are, ready to talk about how to get into keto. First of all, I really want to say that there's levels to keto. There's levels to everything. And also what I say here may not work for you. This is what I did to start keto. I don't still do all of these things, but they are what I would consider the easiest way to get into keto. And I think that it's more important for you to have a steady base, uh, a, a foundation before you start getting fancier and throwing stuff together that may be higher carb, without you realizing it sort of thing. So what I'm gonna suggest for your very first shopping list is beef short ribs, bacon, eggs, some good quality butter, chicken thighs, and ground beef. Then I'm gonna want you to get broccoli and I keep wanting to call it coriander and it's not coriander. It's the fresh coriander is called cilantro and cilantro and any taco spices that you need, get all of that stuff together, get the protein that you like, get enough coffee to get you through the day, get Powerade zeros because you're going to go through the keto flu and you're gonna probably wanna drink about a whole 32 ounce Powerade zero a day to keep yourself in balance. Um, now I do say Powerade Zero because I think that the Powerade Zero tastes better, but Gatorade Zero works too. You're going to want to have a lot of salt in your diet. So also buy like, oh, and buy cream cheese and buy heavy whipping cream and buy jalapenos and just any kind of cheese or whatever you can think of if you're not lactose intolerant and enjoy getting crazy on the fat. Also, if you are like me and you prefer to drink your... Uh, calories because see we're doing this for like two separate households almost because my husband is so into eating meat and I am so not into eating meat that uh, we tend to have a, a doubled grocery bill because we both eat a quite a bit of food um, to maintain our lifestyle and what I like to do is I like to get bags of frozen chunked avocado uh, HEB has it to where they're like in little like half inch cubes and that's probably going to be the best um, size wise for just blenders in general. But if you go to Costco, you can get it like in quarters or halves, uh, which is helpful as, as well. It's just avocados are going to go bad. They just always do. And it's so freaking annoying, but I like smoothies. I like my smoothies to be extra cold. I never have room in my refrigerator to put anything in it to keep stuff cold, uh, outside of what's in there now. So my protein shakes are self, uh, uh, shelf stable so they stay on the shelf so adding in frozen avocado and a, just a little bit of ice saves me uh, from wasting a whole bunch of space because it makes it cold it also makes it really creamy so I don't have to use any kind of milk product in it um, and I find that to be very rewarding to be able to do that for myself pardon me Once you get past the initial keto stage, I would say the first, I don't know, three months, uh, you'll probably be tired of bacon. And that is understandable. Bacon is very decadent and can be super satiating and it can get boring to be constantly satiated. I know that sounds weird, but humans are not meant to be constantly satiated. We're kind of meant to wander and search for things. So being constantly satiated is boring and we don't like it. Uh, I would suggest once that happens to switch to things like prosciutto or salamis or charcuterie plates in general, a lot of like cold plates will refresh your palate. And then you can get back into things slowly by adding back in tacos, adding back in steaks on the grill night. Um, once you get past your first, I gosh, it's so hard. Cause like, I want to tell you guys that it gets easier 
to spend that money. And it really doesn't. Um, I mean, it's easy, but it's at the same time, it's still like, Ugh! but probably after the first three months where you're seeing consistent results, it hurts way less to make those purchases because you're not going to be going to McDonald's seven times. You may go to Starbucks, but $25 uh, every two weeks will get you your small black coffee, which is all you need from Starbucks uh, every day, a small black coffee, right? So it um, you're going to be saving a lot of money by eating at home, by not having fancy drinks all the time, by not being able to drink alcohol unless it's clear liquor like shots. And who wants to go out and pay for shots? Screw that. I save so much money by staying home and not drinking. Um, you're going to save money on entertainment because you're not just going to be going to sit down at a restaurant all the time. You're not going to go sit down at a restaurant and then go sit down in a movie theater and snack on stuff, which is basically what all of my husband and I's dates were prior to doing keto. Instead, now we go rock climbing or we go on a hike or we uh, do something equally fun that I can't remember right now. <laughs> you know, it is not difficult once you get past the initial cheek clinch of the price, it's not that difficult because of all the results you're seeing in other aspects of your life. Once you stop spending that extra money on things that are not giving you joy, um, it makes it a lot easier. It, it really does um, to just continue being keto, honestly. When you take yourself out of the situation, oh, that's another thing. Um, people have asked a couple of times, hey, uh, I'm keto. My friend is having a birthday party. If I go, I'll want to eat the cake. Should I go? And I'm like, this is really personal for me. I'm not going to go someplace that's going to trigger me. I just won't do that to myself. I, um, am a binge eater. And, uh, like right now I haven't eaten anything since last night. And it's like two in the afternoon. And, I'm sitting here like, yeah, I am a binge eater. Why haven't I eaten anything? And it's it's honestly because I'm on a fast right now. So I, I just am not eating. But uh, talking about food makes me want to eat food. Being around food makes me want to eat food. Being around cake makes me want to eat some cake. Like real bad. And I'm just not down for letting myself be put into that kind of position anymore. Um, cake is cake, Swiss cake rolls, little Debbie's, Doritos, Cheetos, Munchies, whatever. They're all like Pop-Tarts, anything with sugar and something delicious in it. I am all for it. So giving, putting myself in a position where I'm, you know, possibly going to offend somebody by not eating their birthday cake. I'm just not willing to do that. I'm just not. So I don't allow myself to be put in those situations. I will go to the birthday party and leave before cake is served, generally speaking. Um, I bring my own snacks. Uh, Steph will attest that I often am bringing over enough snacks to feed both of us, even though she has the same snacks at her house. Uh, but that is my go-to, is to make sure that I have enough to... I won't have that cake because I have a Quest cookie in a car or I don't need that bag of Fritos because I have a bag of Quest chips in the car. Like these are things that are important because I have triggers all over the place. And if I set myself up to not fall to those triggers, I am way more likely to succeed. And so are you. And I hope that maybe this little talk helped. Um, Meal planning is so personal. What you're basically going to do here is you're going to get rid of all your rice. You're going to get rid of all your pasta. There's not going to be any tortillas in your house unless they're carb smart tortillas and only rarely. Uh, you're not going to have a ton of snacky stuff in your house right away. It's not going to be stuff that's like easy to make. You're going to have to cook a lot of it. And that's why a lot of keto people are like, you need to meal prep because you don't want to cook. 
Nobody wants to just sit there and cook every single day. It is so boring. So you take four hours on a Sunday and you meal prep all of your bacon for the week and you meal prep all of your lunches for the week and you meal prep all of your dinner preparations like marinade bags and everything for the week and you put it all in the freezer or the refrigerator or wherever it goes and then you can just pop in the refrigerator, pull out a snack bag or box or whatever and you have made your life infinitely easier. Convenience foods are expensive, which is why I suggest making your own deviled eggs, maybe making your own just hard boiled eggs in general. Bacon is always a good option. Um, it, it can be difficult, but if you are prepared, you're more likely to succeed. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, guys, now it's time for me to take you into my refrigerator and have you judge me for how awful it looks. And here we have my refrigerator. You see I have some condiments, boxes of cheese, and some ground beef, and some ribs, and almond milk. There's coconut milk back there. Got some salami and some beef, uh, prime rib steak. Eggs, obviously. We've got vegetables, which got Brussels sprouts and celery and bell peppers and also tuna which isn't a vegetable but I like to keep cold. Um, this is probably one of the things that you should get. I prefer blonde but this is what they had. And also picnic crema. I don't know it's way better on my stomach than like anything else. Highly recommend having lots and lots of condiments and pickles and stuff on hand and vegetables. This is that thing of avocado chunks I was telling you about. They're really little, so I'm not gonna open it right now. This is shrimp. More avocado chunks. Some vegan sausage. That is uh, cilantro. Everybody needs to do these. Weekly planners are important. My spice cabinet. My precious air fryer. Oh, my legendary foods, nut butters. These are so good, guys. Oh my goodness. Here we've got just cooking stuff. telling you guys I spend most of my money on food all the stuff I need to do baking and make smoothies this one is mint chocolate chip mango strawberry watermelon dishes I need to do I got all my windows open so my plants can enjoy it okay here we have some liquid stevia. This is the stuff I like to use. And then we've got some more flavors. These are the Jordan Skinny Syrups. We don't eat these anymore. I just haven't gotten rid of them yet. I didn't realize they use, they're fried in canola oil and they just don't taste good. Chicharrones. I didn't realize we were so low on chicharrones. So what I like to do is uh, keep the extras of stuff like down in the bottom and then when we're getting low, just pull them back up. <sighs> the chicharrones are one of our favorite things. F-bombs, so more nut butter. Uh, we've got strawberry and cream, cookies and cream, ranch chips, a single protein cookie, some caramel and chocolate shakes, and some peaches and cream shakes. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> that's our little keto pantry haul, I guess. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.